check one two it's live oh damn it worked just a little unplug that's that was it wow is that is that what the youtube video said <laughs> no but i figured it out thank the lord okay all right. all reliable all right we'll just okay great Pittman. we are live what up kate harvey this is episode two of the crown cinema podcast and First, let's just ask Gray, what you been up to? Uh, so, a good amount. I graduate college this Friday. Nice. So, yep. How many years did it take you? Too many. Too many. I came to college in 2018, and then I dropped out for two years, COVID-19. Yep. So, I just came back. Uh, well, I came back last last year. And yeah, finishing it up, wrapping it up. If, if I had to be honest, the COVID college years was a little bit of a blessing because you had so much freedom to do just whatever. But yeah. you also missed that social aspect. Yeah. Luckily, though, you didn't live at SIG then, did you? No, I, I stayed and I lived in the Sigma Chi house for one semester. Although I wasn't going to school, I was working for like that moving company. Remember yeah, yeah, that one we were all working for, Brother Bear. Yeah, and uh, so I did that for a semester. Why don't we just not shout them out? Yeah, we're gonna delete that. <laughs> we're gonna bleep that out real quick. <laughs> but yeah, so I did that, and then yeah, I just wanted to see like what the COVID nineteen world was gonna be like, and uh, sure enough, it lasted a lot longer than I think a lot of us expected it to. And so I just I moved back home. I worked at my dad's car dealership for two years and yeah, but then finally it was like, you know what? I want to, I want to finish up school. I, I was too close to just give up. So I moved back, moved back and that's where we're at now. going to graduate and then I'll have a lot more free time to work on this, yep. which is the, the main goal here. So yeah. That and Barton serving right now i'm not even bartending although they're, oh, really? they're well they're tomorrow's my first day training in the men's lounge which is pretty much just bartending nice yeah so but hopefully i can get a bit like a better job like just a big boy job so then we can finally have weekends yeah there's uh there's pros and cons to having a big boy job no i know i mean like i said like i worked in my dad's uh car dealership that was that was a nine to five i mean uh, it was monday through friday every day just nine to five yeah oh in the dealership it was nine to five yeah no weekends no no uh, well i mean we would do like uh scheduled appointments for like people that can't that could only come in out of town so there were definitely like some saturdays where i'd have to go in just for a little bit just to get them wrapped up um but then yeah uh yeah it was nice i mean i loved having the weekends off yeah, weekends and off. I definitely miss it. Yeah, weekends <laughs> off is nice. Yeah, it definitely sucks that now, like, if I want to make the most money for my job, like, I got to go in on the weekends. Yeah, going back to my point about the COVID years being nice in college, kind of. There's a silver lining to it, because living at SIG, which is me and Grace fraternity house. Oh, Sigma Chi right there. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're looking at a monitor above us, so if we if you see us look up, that's that's why. We can see our uh, we can see our video feed up there. Yeah. Anyway, because you got you got to have the social aspect still, because you had you know ten dudes living in a house together, so you still got to have fun with your buddies. You weren't locked in a house. You know, we kind of just did, did whatever we wanted to. So we had that freedom. So that was fun in college, because really school was a walk in the park. You didn't really do school. You just yeah. sat down for two hours and just finished your homework and yeah. just you know copy and paste your answers because it was all online test yeah so that was nice but missing out on you know the prime of the partying years i know was, yeah. was when you're a sophomore in college which is when i was a, in at sig yeah. and at, during covid so that wasn't as nice but you know you made it through after your covid years and now you're done yeah yeah no it was definitely like you know it sucked missing out on like like you said, the prime years, uh, just for the social aspect. Uh, and it is true. And then when I, when I did come back last year, I, I tried to like grab onto that just like one last time, but there was, it's too late. It's you just late. can't dude. You can't, I go back 
I've been back to the house because I'm only 22. So theoretically, I would still be in college, right? I would be graduating this year probably. Yeah, you would be. But, you know, earlier, tw- when I, you know, like last year, probably I'd go back to go hang out just to, because I, le- I dropped out of school. For those that don't know, I dropped out when I was a junior. So I'd go back sometimes and just go party. And it's just, you just can't do it because <laughs> when you're out of school and there's only freshmen. Yeah. And I have yeah. a fiance. Yeah, fiance. Am I going to go on the dance floor and go party? No. I, I mean, not. hey, man, I'm telling you, like, I'm single. And that's the best part. I'm, I'm completely single, but I still felt weird. I'd just be out there and they'd be like, oh, yeah, like, I'm 18. Like, what grade are you? And I'm like, I'm a senior and I'm 23 and there's no way I'm about to explain my story to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. It's just not good. <laughs> you just can't do it. There's like a hard cut off line where it's okay. And then just one day you're like, I yeah. got to get out of here. No, I, yeah. Yeah, seriously. So, but it was good. You know, it was good. I went to like a couple big parties and then like, I definitely like went to the tailgates. Um, I just went to my last meeting this past Sunday, although I never went to a meeting ever <laughs> since I did move back. Yeah, bro. I saw a picture on somebody's Snapchat. If you go into a, <clears throat> the chapter meeting, Yeah, and I'm like, what? <laughs> he just came back one time just to say goodbye. Well, we, to we all had the guys a, that you don't know. Yeah, no, we, uh, some of my fraternity brothers, like my pledge brothers, like reached out to me and they were like, Hey, it's our senior night. We're saying our final goodbyes. It would mean a lot if you made it out. And I was like, you know what? I, no, they I, invited you. All right. Yeah. yeah I, I got the formal invitation. I didn't just show up, <laughs> but no, it was cool. You know, I'm glad I did it. I got to say my goodbyes kind of explain <laughs> why I didn't really <laughs> come back, but more than anything, just say goodbye. For those that don't know, it's funny because in the fraternity world, in school, you really only know the people that are in the fraternity from when you were in there because people cycle through so quickly. So if you're gone for two years, you don't know half the people in that yeah, room. Which is and exactly what happened to me. Yeah, so it's funny that, you know, Grace having to like <laughs> explain Save my final everything <laughs> so yeah. that they all understand why he's saying goodbye <laughs> to a bunch of people that you know, maybe you've heard of you. I, right? I think a lot of them, because now that we live in the house that we okay, do. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I think they probably just thought I was some random guy, just that yeah. cool roommate that, you know, a lot of SIGs know, which I knew plenty of guys like that when I was like 19. I was like, oh yeah, he's like pretty much a SIG, but he's not. Yeah. And like, they probably thought that about me, which I don't care. I mean, it's whatever, but it was nice to just like, hey, by the way, the whole time I was a brother. <laughs> <laughs> but see y'all miss y'all kind of <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah so okay uh today what are we doing today we're gonna watch taxi driver my yeah. idea this is my pick uh main reason i've never seen it and so i'm really excited i know it's one of those just like if you're gonna be a movie watcher or at least claim to be or try to be. This is definitely one that you got to get under your belt. Um, I saw recently that Martin Scorsese has, uh, he's got that Leonardo DiCaprio movie coming out on Apple like later this year. Does he? I didn't know that. He does. He does. I can't remember the name. It's something to do with either the sun or the moon, but it's it what? looks good. And then, but more, re- but other than that, I also saw that he's working on a Chanel cologne commercial with timothy chalamet and i was like you know what i like i like martin scorsese like you know how you get martin scorsese to make you a commercial money yeah you pay him a lot of money yeah (laughs) because what does he killers of the flower moon yeah you you hadn't heard of it no yeah it's uh it's coming out this year members of the oil wealthy Osage Nation are murdered under mysterious circumstances in the 1920s. Oh, so like Indian. I don't know. I, there's really, you know what? There's not a trailer out. There's not really much about it. Like it's still kind of a yeah. mysterious movie. It comes like, out in October. Yeah, but nobody knows what it's really going to be about. Um, okay, well, this is the book that is, it's all based off a book. Well if, well, if it's based off book, then I guess maybe people know what it's about. Yeah. But there hasn't been any uh, like behind the scene pictures or anything like that really released yeah i feel like For he's sure a, sure. he's a little old school where he doesn't really promote his movies like that that's how i like it yeah the people watch it people know who martin scorsese and leo 
Like they know who those guys are. They know what they can do together. The book, the book that this is adapted from, is called "Killers of the Flower Moon: The Osage Murders and the Birth of the FBI." Something to read. <laughs> hey, maybe I yeah. might, I might read it next after I finish Dune. Yeah. I finally got through the first book. Yeah, I saw, I saw it on your, on your desk. Yep. So today's episode, we're gonna watch Taxi Driver. So let's go watch it. Let's go pop some popcorn. <laughs> I'm down. All right. We just finished Taxi Driver. Yeah, we sure did. Yeah. No, no, no it was... Uh, what an interesting film. It was definitely... I think what it was about... I've seen it before, but this time... The first time I just watched it, I didn't think about it too much. This time watching it... He's a very, very lonely and lost person who has no purpose in life. Absolutely. He's a man who went to war. He fought in Vietnam. He was a Marine. They mentioned that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He felt like he had a purpose in Vietnam, right? He's fighting in a war. It wasn't a good war, but, you know, maybe... I don't think Scorsese was really commenting on that, but he's a very lost, purposeless person Yeah, who has... Nobody to talk to. He tries to talk to the girl at the adult, what's that called, dirty movie theater. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want anything to do with him. Um, he's trying to make conversations with people. He doesn't have anybody. He finally finds a girl that he likes, a girl that's pure, because the rest of New York City is disgusting to him. He thinks that everybody's just a scum, and he hates everybody that is in New York City, but he finds this one chick who's pretty. He thinks she's like a goddess, and... She ends up not liking him because he takes her to a or yeah, he takes her to a dirty movie theater to watch a porno. And he's obviously also not a very smart person. Right? He doesn't he has no real opinions about things. When you hear his excerpts about yeah. him writing, you know, all of his note journals, I'm listening to what he's saying in his journals, and he doesn't say anything. It's all just very kind of just general. It's just observations. Yeah, there's nothing no. deep. He's not like. He observes really, things, but he doesn't really think about them or like give them any kind of meaning or purpose. Even when he's talking to her. So what I was saying is I don't think that he was he even. He didn't realize that was an inappropriate thing to do. Yeah. He just doesn't know better. Yeah, no, he, he just, uh, you know, no common sense and just no original thoughts. But he yeah. does mention that like in the movie how he just he believes that like every person should just fall into the role as just a human being or something along those lines like well, that, that was what that taxi i have a note about that um how him being lost towards that movie when he talks to the, his taxi co-worker the guy that has the ball top and the size and the thing and yeah he's like that's the dumbest shit i've ever heard in my life yeah that like, but he didn't really have anything better no he, he essentially he was De Niro's character, Travis, was pretty much asking him for advice. He like, I need some purpose in my life. Like, I don't even know what to do. And he's like, dude, you're young. Go have fun. You can do anything. Go get drunk. Whatever. It doesn't matter. And he's like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. I need... That is like the worst thing to tell somebody who feels like they don't have any purpose. Yeah. Is like, you can do whatever you want. He's like, I know, but I need to do something. And yeah. if you think about it, when he did find some purpose, when he decided to train and he was going to like, you know, save Iris. He found that purpose. He thought, okay, this is my purpose now. And so when he put his mind to something, he created this fucking arsenal of weapons and a gun that shot out of his arm. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. Dude, go Travis. You I can mean, find that, that was... you know, if he's got, he finally had some purpose in his life and he ended up cra- crafting this fucking. Well, yeah. And to kind of talk about that, that one, that was like one of those scenes that definitely like drew me back into the movie because you know, I don't want to drag on it because it was like a movie from the seventies and all those movies, obviously it's 2023. Like they're just not shot the same. They just look older, a little cheesier to me, you know, all that. And so like when it's him, like doing the, the pull ups and the push ups and like all that kind of stuff, I'm like, Oh God, like this is just so corny, whatever. But then he does like he like actually like flips that gun and it like it's like a fucking gadget and i was like oh whoa 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 he's like actually kind of getting stuff done right now 
And so, like, that, like, kind of drew me back in. And I was like, this guy's not, like, totally lost. Like, he, he definitely learned something from the military because that was pretty impressive. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, he's just – I've seen a lot of commentaries on it where they talk about how it's kind of like a representation of masculinity if you're lost. Because there's a there's that saying where it's like um, – what is it? How does it start? It's some, have you know, you might've heard it's like the strong men, hard times create strong men, strong men create easy times, easy times create weak men and weak men create hard times. So it's a representation of if you're a weak man, you like, cause in the end of the movie, he becomes a hero accidentally. He's yeah. not really doing it to be a good person. He just is just crazy and just wants to kill somebody. He was going to yeah. kill the, the, uh, Senator, uh, that didn't work out, so he's like, okay, ooh, let me kill this guy. Yeah. And then, ooh, maybe I can save this girl. But he never saved the girl. He killed them all, and they just sat there and was like, yeah. wanted to kill himself, right? So he really wasn't trying to be I mean, hey, hero. she went back to school, moved back in with her parents. She's not having to sell herself. But at the same time, I don't know. She's probably super depressed being back home because she wasn't getting high all the time. So who knows? Yep. Who knows? I mean, there's probably, levels to this. Probably couldn't have sex anymore yeah i doubt that was something that uh was allowed in that household at that point at least he had some morals where he didn't want to hook up with the 12 year old girl thank god he okay had that i was sense. i was a little confused on that i didn't know if made i think he was saying she was 12 and a half years old but i also couldn't tell if he was saying like she's been working for 12 and a half years but she didn't look like she was that old but she didn't look okay. like she was that young either. she didn't seem like she was okay hopefully she wasn't 12 uh, May, he might have been talking about another girl that was 12 and a half. But I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know. It was, listen, uh, um, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, I knew I needed to watch this movie just to get it under my belt, just to say, okay, I've finally seen it. Me personally, it's not really my kind of movie. Uh, and don't get me wrong, it doesn't have anything to do with like the time that the movie was made. Um, cause like I, I'm a fan of like some older movies and stuff, but just like kind of the long driving sequences, maybe that was something for more of like people that are more accustomed to New York. Maybe there was some stuff there that like, I just didn't see that like a New Yorker would. Um, so I don't know, you know, I just wasn't a fan of it. Uh, well, no, it's like, a the, I'll tell you the ending got me. I was like, Oh, okay. Cool spin, whatever. But I mean. That was only like an hour and 56 minute long movie and like it felt way longer than that, which is crazy because we just watched Air um, last week and like pretty much the same time and like yeah. that movie flew. Well, the so. thing, this movie is more of a character study. It's not like a, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. plot driven. It's just yeah, about yeah. him. And if you think about it and from like an artistic perspective, the plot kind of just floats around, kind of like how he is just through life. Exactly. So yeah, and, I, very and much I got an, that. It's very yeah. much an artsy film. It's not a yeah, fun, no, exciting. Ooh, let's watch Taxi Driver. Yeah, it's definitely abstract. It's kind of one. It's a movie that you sit down and watch to appreciate, not to entertain yourself. For sure. Unless you want, I like to. No, no, it's, entertain it's yourself with those kind of movies, but yeah. No, I got it. It's it's a guy that's really lost, and like every conversation he had with pretty much anybody was just lost yeah you know never especially said. him talking to his uh like his what are they called cabbie yeah. and the guy's like essentially he's like dude i don't i don't have anything to tell you i don't know what the fuck you want me to say like i just say that like you are what you do and like what you do is you're a taxi driver and like that's just who you are that's what you're gonna be in life and you know i guess they didn't like that so now he's a taxi driver that is also kind of a hero. Um, but yeah, I mean, not the most riveting film. I'm I've definitely heard. a fan of Martin Scorsese. Uh, and I get that was like one of his earlier films. So, you know, big reach to like do what he did, especially in that time. It wasn't a commercial film. Like, you know, so. Yeah, like you said, uh, every conversation he has, he doesn't say anything. Because I wrote down a note at the no. beginning on that first date he's on with her he doesn't say anything to her he yeah. just asks her these questions and she tries to 
you know, play with them and joke with them, but he doesn't get that she's doing that. So he yeah. just like just looks at her uncomfortably and then yeah. asks her another question, right? Yeah. So he's not, he's just not all there. It's yeah. a, it's a guy that's not very intelligent because even in the beginning during his interview for the taxi driver position, he said, there they ask him education. He's like, some, you know, you're in there. <laughs> yeah. Clearly not educated, right? Yeah. Doesn't have, know anything about politics. He, yet he puts stickers in his wall of, palantine and you yeah. know the, the senator who's running for president well and listen to this the reason that i was like uh kind of surprised by that for his character is like at the beginning uh he's talking to like the other taxi drivers and he's telling them like yeah like you know i listen to the radio all day he like talks about like a crime that was committed on the street so i'm like he's listening to the radio like he's listening but he still just doesn't have any opinions no he just yeah it doesn't doesn't think for himself. No, he's definitely like just in his own head, not really listening to the rest of the world, which is terrifying. Yeah. I'm on the boat you're in. I, uh, I can appreciate these kind of movies, but I don't necessarily enjoy them. Yeah. No. I like exciting movies. I like fun movies. You know, people think that that's kind of, you know, lame. And the fact that I want to make movies is like, you should appreciate these artsy films, but yeah. I kind of like the approach member from green lights. Matthew McConaughey was talking about how he was the only one in his class. He was like, no, fuck that. I like the uh, blockbuster movies. Like, those yeah. are fun movies. Yeah. It's like, I don't like all the artsy movies. And I'm kind of the same way where I don't really necessarily like the artsy movies. I can sit down and appreciate them, but I would prefer not to watch them. I like the exciting ones. That's why I like Quentin Tarantino so much because his stuff has some deeper meanings, but they're just so action-packed and yeah. it's so fun. It's an enjoyable experience. Yeah, you want people to really watch your shit, make it exciting. It and, is. you know, like the ending of Taxi Driver, it was cool. I'm sure it would have been a lot cooler if it was done 20, 30 years later, too. Um, but, you know, just yeah, not really. Now, nothing, yeah, nothing I mean, if you're used to nowadays movies, movies nowadays are very much need to be entertaining and action-packed because they're trying to make as much money as possible. And there's so many movies out there. And it's way easier to make a movie that there's just too much competition. So you can't have a risky artsy movie like this that is a classic but it's also because it's mark scorsese and it's more of it's a classic because of the way it depicts somebody's psychology yeah it's not about how exciting it is or you know whatever no i get it It was definitely one of the more honestly just like realistic movies i think just as far as how he definitely did like kind of pick apart his brain and his path of thinking and just the choices he made and like i respect that i get that but I also think that if you're going to do a movie like that, if I were to do a movie like that, it's just going to be a lot more dialogue. I've heard um, at the ending of the movie, whenever the first girl he meets, whatever her name is, I forget, when she gets in his taxi cab, people think that that was a dream. Oh, Betsy? Yeah, Betsy. When Betsy gets in the back, people think that that's a dream sequence because you never see her in the back of his cab. Mm. You just see her in the rearview mirror. But then she gets out and, you know, he doesn't really say anything to her. And then you see him after he leaves, he gets into his like his deranged look again where he's like looking around. He's like, you know, yeah. back in his like crazy phase. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, again, that's where like the abstract of the film like comes in. Like, was she really there? Was it like just in his own head? Is all of this just in his own head? Did he really become a hero for like walking into a building and just like murdering three pimps? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it was only a few because magazine or newspaper clippings, you know, didn't make national news. It was just like a couple. Yeah, but I mean, that I think that's like another thing that, you know, it can be taken away as abstract. Is like, does something like that really make like the front of a magazine cover? Like, probably not. But newspapers, like, it's a story. Especially in New York. Yeah. At that like, time, probably. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the front page of the news at that point would have been uh, Center to Pal. Palatine, yeah. Palatine, yeah, yeah, like he's front page, you know, not the yeah. taxi driver that killed three pimps. And it's also, you know, mafia mob times, so yeah. that's big in the news, I'm sure as well. Yeah. So, so I mean, there there was a lot. Uh, one thing that I was looking for at the end when he was talking to Betsy, and I'm like trying to figure out, I'm like, is this in his own head? Blah blah blah. Like, I didn't see the scar on his neck. I kept looking for it Mm. because he got shot in the neck. But maybe if I went back and, like, saw it, I'm sure there would be, like, maybe, like, a little 
indication of like a scar like yeah but no i didn't see anything so to me it seemed like it was probably a dream yeah because he's fucking crazy he is crazy and going back to him being dumb you notice too that his handwriting is shitty he has handwriting of a little kid i can't hate on that my handwriting's terrible (laughs) is it that's awful i got pretty bad handwriting but i can make it nice when i need to nope no, 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 no. I all caps. Bad. The I secret, all caps. Just write in all caps and it's neat. Yeah, but then if I'm reading it, I'm just like, oh, why is this guy screaming at me? Let's see. What number movie was this? How many has he made before this one? I wonder. I don't know. Let's see. Martin Scorsese. Let's look up all of his filmography. Uh, Taxi Driver was made in 76. Mm-hmm. That's when my mom was born. All right. Uh, I'm sure she'll love that shout out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she ain't listening to this. <laughs> um, mean Streets was before that in 73. So it looks like it was probably number two. Okay. He has some other ones, but I don't know if he made these or not, if he, or if he was just involved. Yeah. Usually the top few on Google. Shark's Tale. Oh, he was a character in Shark's Tale. Scorsese. <laughs> was he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was the fourth Sykes. Wow. And he was in him. He just put himself in the movie twice. Scorsese did. He was a guy that was going to kill his wife for cheating. Yeah. And then he was also one of just like the pedestrians. Yeah. That just chilling. Betsy walked by. What would you. How many. Scorsese movies have you seen? Have you seen, uh, I've seen Goodfellas? This. I've seen Goodfellas. Wolf of Wall Street, obviously. Wolf of Wall Street. The Irishman. I've seen The Irishman like three times. Shutter Island, you've seen that. I've seen Shutter Island. The Departed. Love The Departed. That's one of my favorite movies. Have you seen Raging Bull? No. I haven't seen that one either. Have you seen Casino? I've seen Casino. Gangs of New York? Yeah. I, didn't I haven't, seen, I haven't seen that one. The Aviator? Yep. Hugo? Nope, I haven't seen Hugo. He, yeah, he directed that. Mean Streets? Mm-mm. I haven't seen that either. Where would you rank these among the ones that you've seen? What would you put, would you put it last? Out of the ones you've seen? Uh, Between that and I, I didn't really, I wasn't like a crazy, crazy fan of The Aviator. But again, I just thought it was too drawn out. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely like down there for me, but it's abstract. So I know it's not really supposed to be liked. It's just supposed to like kind of make you think like if you. Yeah, like I could probably go home and like really like break down scenes, think about it. But like, yeah, watching it, it was kind of a drag. Which, yeah. No disrespect, but whatever. Fuck it. These abstract movies aren't always supposed to be liked. That's probably, I mean, how many times has Martin gone back and watch this movie probably a lot i would bet i don't don't know i wonder if people watch their own movies i'd wonder how many you think if you made a movie you wrote it if you would watch it when it first got made oh obviously you need to check to make sure it looks good right but i wonder if you go back and watch like if if you if me and you made a movie we're like all right let's sit down let's watch you know whatever yeah he probably did because maybe one scene that he put in the movie he had intentions that scene like means something and then maybe like 20 years later when he watches it he's like oh wow like i can't believe like i I really don't even think like that anymore like i don't really believe uh what that scene originally was supposed to mean yeah so the cool thing about the cool thing about these kind of movies too is that if they're written like this where it's kind of more open and it's more of a character study you can take your own kind of opinions and and feelings about it because yeah. the character the, char- way the, the way the character moves you can kind of just decide how you and inf- match your own clues yeah because is, is he, is he crazy it. or is he just an exaggeration for how a lot of people in this world feel just lost confused wanting that sense of purpose but then nobody really a cares to or b just can't and so i mean yeah of course there's like there's levels to this movie but there's always levels to these movies always all right let's see uh this movie was made for 1.9 million dollars back in 1979 
So let's see how much that is today. How much they made this movie for? I'm always curious on how much they make a movie for. I mean, because it was all shot. Ten in million. York. Yeah. Damn. Mm. Pretty low budget movie. It looked low budget too. It didn't look anything special. Like, <laughs> no, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, there was. Looks wasn't. like he just needed to pay New York to just get some street time, like that kind of stuff. But yeah, they couldn't even get different. Um, they didn't even get different. Cause uh, C- uh Secret Service people. It was the same dude every time. Yeah. Same guy every time. Uh, isn't he's from New York though, right? Who Martin Scorsese? I believe so. Yeah, that that's why sense. he's that's why he likes all the gangs of New York and the gangs and the mafia and the mob. He yeah. writes a lot of stuff about them because I think he grew up in that era around those kind of people. Yeah. So I mean, it you know, I think that was just like his probably poetic stance or just human stance on like what New York was at that time, which is just a lot of lost people a lost society nobody had any original thoughts or ideas and you know they'll just follow with any they'll follow any idea that somebody they like or respects tells them to well somebody like him that you know who's not very smart and intelligent and doesn't have any meaning in his life definitely just kind of follows whatever they hear because they don't have anything to grasp exactly but that can tell you a lot about america and like the system of voting, like there are so many people that will just a family member that they like or somebody they're dating, like that's who they'll believe in politically. And that's just kind of how the system can be, which isn't what it's supposed to be, but that's just human instinct. Some people don't want to really think about that kind of stuff and then actually be forced to like create their own opinions. Oh, hey, lady. My dog just opened up for the all listening. Hello, just opened the door <laughs> and walked in. Yeah, she knows how to open doors. Yep, it's unfortunate. She's, she's too smart. She uh, she does that a lot. She'll. It's honestly my fault. I should have locked the door. Well, yeah, but no, yeah. it's all right. Yeah, I I wonder these kind of movies. You know, the people that create them, it's. They're probably very proud of it because it's they, it's well made. It's a well put together movie. There's a lot of deep meanings behind it. The way they shot it, edited it, wrote it, the whole thing. It's very artistic and it flows correctly with how like on, it's very on theme of yeah. what it's supposed to be. Right? It's not exciting, but it's on theme. So these kind of movies are for the creators. Love them. They're very proud of them. They win awards, but it's not enjoyable for the audience as much i wonder what the uh let's see what the uh, audience score is for this on rotten tomatoes i feel like it was because like it's high point, critics i feel like it was 8.2 or something but i don't for know. for uh audience 96 percent on oh shit 96 percent for the critics and 93 percent for the audience yeah but that's one of those things like i mean people just are like oh like we heard like again yeah what did i tell you at the beginning i said this is one of those movies where i i always hear about it like i i'm supposed to watch it like as a film you're supposed to love it if you don't love it you don't fucking know what movies are yeah like you just don't get it well i'm here to tell you that i watched it and i get it or you know at least i have an idea i have an opinion on if i get it i just didn't fucking like it that much and uh, I think I'll be okay. Yeah. It was cool. Maybe watch it again, too, because it gets better the second time you watch it. Because you know from the get-go what's yeah. going on. You can see all the little... These, these are the kind of It'll movies... It'll be a while before I watch this movie. These are the kind of movies where you got to rewatch them to really, I think, appreciate them. Because you don't get I, the... Yeah. Hey, when, you, when you're looking for what you think already and you watch it, you're looking for things. You're like, oh, that connects. Oh, okay, that connects here. It's a lot better on the second run i will okay. tell you well i'll tell you this listen like uh we watched babylon what a roller coaster we literally sat down and we were like holy shit like what a movie but what was it about i didn't understand it but i still liked it yeah you know yeah i didn't under i well i think i have an understanding about this movie i just didn't really like i didn't like the pace i got like i just didn't like the pacing of it like if it's an hour and 56 minutes pretty much like i get that it's not super short but it's not super long like you can probably pace it better there was just a lot of scenes where i was like damn like are we really about to watch him drive in silence 
for like four minutes straight. Well, see, I'd argue that they should make it like that because there's it, the movie is about his character. So you have to show how lonely, lonely he is and, and he's just driving. He's lost. Turn the fucking radio on, pal. Oh, my God. <laughs> but you see, like, it's not <laughs> exciting, but it's not it's not exciting, but that's how you have to make it. I get it. I get it. I do get it. And I'm sure if Scorsese ever saw this, he would totally understand my opinion nah, on why I don't like it. He'd piss. He'd be pissed, bro. Well, then I'm sorry, but I love Departed and the Goodfellas. DC, but those are high. Those are fun, exciting movies. They there we go. Got some killing. Boom. Plot twists. Boom. I I'll say this like I didn't really like The Aviator either. I didn't. That one's long as shit, right? Long That's like a three hour and a half, three and a half hour movie. <laughs> so it was Gangs of New York, right? Yeah, but I think I was like, I think I was like brutally hungover. Like I think I was 18 and I just threw that movie on. So I didn't really watch it. Okay. So maybe. Dude, Scorsese loves to fucking film a movie. He loves to make that thing long. Those, uh, those big time, big names, they love to do that. They love to just show off. And like, it's good acting. It's good acting. I'll say this. It was I really mean cool. the, I mean, the big names as in like the filmmakers, they love to just like yeah. make a long movie because they, they're like, they know that Everything they're good. They know people love them. They know people are going to go yeah. see it no matter what they make. Yeah. But then like Leo and Robert De Niro, like they're going to be like always loyal to Scorsese and all that. And so I will say this. It was really cool to see Robert De Niro playing a loser. Like, I don't think I've ever really seen him play, like, a loser character. I always see him play some kind of, like, tough guy that pretty much everybody in the movie is going to be intimidated by. And, like, this movie, he wanted people to be intimidated by him. He wanted people to, like, be like, oh, you work for the government. Like, oh, wow. Like, you know, leaving the message behind, like, hey, like, I'm going to be gone for a while. Like, I do important shit. But, like, he doesn't. But in contrast, like, in Goodfellas, like when he tells somebody like, "Hey, I'm gonna be gone for a while," they're gonna be like, "Yeah, we I fucking believe that." I wonder if they didn't, if he didn't show it, but I wonder if he was going like he was a, a schizo. I wonder if he believed he actually worked for the government, or if he was just lying to just make his parents think that, to make his mom think that he was yeah. doing something important with his life. Maybe yeah. he was just lying because of that. But then he was talking to. Again, Iris and said, uh, so I wonder if he was, because at the end, he definitely seemed like a schizo with him. Like, he's like looking around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, at the end, you know, the ending kind of threw me off at that point. Cause I was just like, Whoa, like he didn't really, I, like, when was he doing that? Like the whole movie, he was taking pills at the end too. Yeah. Like I didn't see him taking pills at any other part of the movie. So it, see, that's why he truly did not. Like she said in the beginning, he's a walking contradiction because he was yeah. talking about the scum of the of New York and how p- these people are so shitty. He ain't much better. Yeah, he's pouring liquor in his fucking bread, milk, whatever that was. It wasn't yeah. cereal, but it was like bread in a bowl with milk in it. Poured peach flavored whiskey. It looked like, and then he's taking p- popping pills. He's you know trying to keep his body clean, but he's still. Doing yeah. all the, you know, whatever pills he's taking. So he's definitely, he's a dude off his rocker. So he definitely could have been a schizo. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's why, uh, that's why they make movies like this. So that way people, I wonder if he was doing this. That's, that's the whole point of these long drawn out. Yeah. Cause if you go back and watch, you could probably study some things. This is kind of, this is the kind of movie For sure. you go and study. For sure. For sure. Which is, uh. You know, a nice thing to make if you're an artist because it's like a show of your artistry, but it's not as fun to watch on the first watch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's why Tarantino just can't be beat, dude. Like, he he writes Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is kind of a character study of just two dudes who are best buddies in the acting world, and one of them's fallen apart because he's losing his, you know, losing his fame he's losing his game and cliff booth brad pitt's character is he ain't losing it he's always been like this he's just a hippie dude who loves to just he's just rolling with he's the just rolling with the punches yeah but tarantino writes it to be exciting and crazy shit happens and Again, it's just like you know i remember how much like nobody really liked once upon a time in hollywood when it first came out 
Really? I uh, yeah. Like, well, you know what? Just like people, like friends in my circle at the time. Yeah, I've heard actually. Yeah, and people were just like, "It was so slow." Blah blah blah. And I was just like. I fucking love that movie in theaters. Yes, that movie like I, was sick. I went and watched it like that same week, like a few days later. I was like, this is kick-ass. Cliff Booth is a badass character. And then, honestly, I came to love Leo's character. Like, so. I think people just... Um, but again, that's just how it is. You could not like a movie. It's totally fine. Not people. I was going to say, we just... We're also biased because we like Tarantino. Yeah. Whatever he puts <laughs> out, we're about to be like, this is about to be the next best movie ever. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, but hey, I'm that same way with Scorsese. I'm not going to lie. I went into this movie with, I mean, not high hopes because I always, you know, I keep my expectations like, I try to keep them a little bit balanced. But I was like, you know what? There's a popular Scorsese movie. Like, I figured, you know, this was like essentially his breakout film. So I was like, damn, like, all right, I'm, I'm really ready to get into this. And then by the end of the movie, I was like, eh, not really for me. Whatever. Yeah. I, yeah, if you watch it again at some point, you should bring back your thoughts. If, if you thought it was different, better, I'll just, worse. I'll just turn this podcast on. <laughs> I'll, just li- I'll listen to this. You'd be like, you idiot. Yeah, I was like, how could you miss that? You <laughs> yeah. fool. Yeah. You're never going to make it. <laughs> no, we'll see. I, I might do that, but I'll tell you this. The new movie that he's dropping uh, with Leo this yeah. year on Apple, I'll tell you what. By the end of the movie, I'm not going to be some sucker that's like, oh my God, like what a genius movie. If I don't really believe it, if I think that movie fucking sucks, I'll tell you that I thought that movie fucking sucked. You know what? Because you're a man who thinks for himself. You aren't like Travis. Yeah. I got a, I got opinions, Trav. I got opinions. It's. I'm surprised Scorsese's making a movie that's not in theaters because he's a big cinema, go to the theater kind of guy because yeah. they all are because that's how they you know make money. Yeah. But I guess he got a fat check. Again, hey, maybe he's chasing that bread because he's making a commercial. Yeah. He's making an Apple TV movie. I think I think he just, you know, he's getting up there. So he's really just got to pump him out. I mean, Robert De Niro just had his seventh kid at the age of 78, 79. That's wild. Yeah. See, they're just trying to. That's very irresponsible. That's how you have a special needs kid. Yeah. Yeah. Well. What, uh, how much. What do you think? So Scorsese is one of the biggest and best filmmakers in the world. What do you think his net worth is? Oh, I I couldn't even tell. I I have no idea. I have no idea how much. I remember looking up. I think. I think it was Tarantino's. Was like I don't. I don't remember. Actually, I'm not going to say because I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really big in like the numbers when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, okay. I don't think I really know anybody's net worth on this entire planet. Yeah, I mine. mean, I couldn't name one off the bat. Okay. Like, I just don't even know what the ballpark is for that. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so I'll just tell you. We'll we'll play the, we'll keep playing this game because I like looking up the okay. net worth. So yeah, you'll yeah. get better over time because you're right. trying to understand different okay. people's money. Mark Scorsese has a net worth. This is a guess too. People don't know people's actual net worths because it's very hard to because you don't know what kind of properties they own, all kind of business stuff. They could have it in different names, whatever. But his per- guest amount net worth is $200 million. He's worth $200 million. Now that doesn't mean he has $200 million cash. That means if he owns a $10 million house, that goes up in value every year. So that his net worth grows over that time. So that... And plus, he has probably companies that make movies and all that kind of stuff. Plus, what he's earned over time. And the earning is probably a lot of that because you get paid cash for movies, right? It's about two hundred million, bro. The man's five four. That's right below his net worth. I don't know. <laughs> it says net worth two hundred million. Height <laughs> five four. <laughs> I was like, are you about to tell me how much he would like stand if he was like on his money? I'm sure you could get. All right, who do you think is the this is an easy one if you think about it. Who is the film director or filmmaker who has the biggest net worth? Don't think about the best movies. Don't think about... Just think about who... Christopher Nolan? No. You can't think about... You got to think about who... Who gets like the highest budget movies? Like 
Yeah, or who created a movie franchise that now has a fuck ton of money getting pumped into it. That's a pretty easy guess right there. Wait, yeah, I mean, I'm just now I'm like on the spot. Um. <laughs> George Lucas. Yeah. 10 but billion. Just, but there's so, huh? 10 billion. That is his net worth because he has Star Wars, I mean, bro. He, yeah, yeah. Damn. That's insane. But not really, when you really think so, about it. So, Star Wars and Indiana Jones franchises, which have generated north of $12 billion in global box office ticket sales. Just those two franchises alone. So, it's all the top ones that are all like Steven Spielberg's. He makes a fuck ton of movies. Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. Tyler Perry, $800 million. Damn. Michael Bay is up there. I, You know, when I said Christopher Nolan, I was also like Michael Bay. Yeah, you could see him like making a lot of money. Scorsese is up there. He's number sixteen on that list. Oh yeah, million. he's been putting in the work. He's been putting in the years. I think. Uh, <laughs> I want to say that I think Quentin Tarantino's net worth it was like fifty million, which is like a lot less than what you would think it would be. But that's because he sacrifices. He doesn't just make any movie. He makes his movies. Yeah, because Scorsese would. He doesn't write his movies. He just directs them. Yeah. He might have written some. I'm not 100% sure on that, but he definitely just mainly directs them. Let's see. All right, so you, so I told you that Tarantino's is lower and Scorsese's is 200. Take a wild guess at what Tarantino's. I I said 50, but I don't think that's accurate. It might be around that. I know it's like around that. I don't know. I could see it being less than that. But less than that? I could. I mean, he does a lot. Like, he's done a lot of just low-budget films. Like, But not in recent years. I don't know. Hateful Eight, there's no way it could have been that high of a budget. Kill Bill, probably pretty solid budget. Yeah. Once Upon a Time, that's a huge budget movie because they had to turn Hollywood back into the 70s. Mm -hmm. All right, guess, shoot a number. It's less than $200 million, and it's bigger than 50 Okay, I mean, 85 mil. 120 million. Hey, good for him. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, good job, Quentin. That is still pretty solid. You'd think it'd be more, but 120 million is fucking a lot of money. You couldn't even spend that if you wanted to. No, I don't think I could. You literally cannot, unless you're buying yachts, right? Unless you're buying like that kind of shit. But I don't need yachts. I only need one. If you're just buying things that you would buy right now, you cannot spend that kind of money. No, I don't think so. That's pretty insane. That's a lot of ramen. <laughs> That's a lot of ramen. <laughs> That's more than 120 million ramen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taxi driver, what do you give it rated out of 10? You know. You got to think about the enjoyable, the enjoyability, yeah. the artistry, the filmmaking, the writing. Put it all in a one sum and tell me what you're rating. Give it a... I give it a solid six. I give it damn six, boy. I give it a six point zero. Wow, that's you put that less than air. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Damn, I'm gonna give it a seven point five. Yeah, you're sheep. If I was a sheep, I would make it a fucking nine. I'd be like, dude, that was a ten, bro. That was the best movie I've ever seen. It was a six to me. I mean, nothing, nothing crazy about it. The Again, I mean, for sure, it had nothing to do with my captivation throughout the movie. I know, like, that is a factor into this, but even the artistry, like, I get that there were things that could have been, like, could have been broken down more, and there can be if and when I'd watch it again. But overall, the delivery of these, like, abstract ideas, I feel like it could have been done better. All right. I think, uh, yeah, I mean... I give it a 7.5 because the enjoyability is not as high as a, another movie, as other movies. No. <laughs> but I think it was well written. I like the psychology of it. It's kind of fun thinking about the character and, you know, what he's thinking in his mind and how he's going crazy. And he's, you kind of see his progression and it seems like it's accurate. It seems like a real person could do that because real people do do that. That's yeah. what school shooters are. Yeah. Right? Like those weak, lost, purposeless 
pe- men who have zero purpose in their life and they're weak and they're lost and they're lonely, yeah. that's what happens. They become violent because they have nothing else to do and they think that's the right thing to do, which is pretty crazy. Something to think about, Kate Harvey. Yep. All right. You gonna wrap this thing up? What are you doing after this? I'm gonna go take this exam. Oh, you have, oh, is that your last one? Yep. All right. Well, good luck on the exam. And uh, we're out.